Hey buddy, welcome back to Running the Ropes, it's Rem, and today we are here to discuss the June 18th edition of the 205 Live uh, results. And before we get started, I just want to give a giant shout out and a thank you for those who watch the video and support us, give some really good feedback. Uh, Tina and I really appreciate it. And obviously, before I get started, she's obviously not here. She's actually at work as I'm doing this, so I'm running solo for a little bit. Um, so without further ado, let's get it started. The first match was between the Lucha House Party, uh, which represented with Lindsay Dorado and Graham Metalik, versus the Singh Brothers. Um, before I actually talk about the actual match, there was actually like, I don't know if it's new to me, but there's a, I guess a presentation shift there. They have these new uh, cool camera angles, which is from the crowd and even the cameraman that's on the ground. They're like rotating, so you can actually see more of the action as opposed to just a regular um, ring facing camera i mean they do use it but there's more variety which i think is pretty cool it kind of reminded me of uh defiant wrestling if you guys ever saw it it's like a very cinematic feel to it which i was definitely up for and in terms of the match uh the sync brothers are actually not a bad ba bad tag team for heels i mean they do their showboating they're dancing around and the crowd dislikes them if the crowd dislikes you you're obviously a good heel uh, but there's actually a one move that I really liked. It was a uh, they had him in a side Russian leg sweep position, and one brother gave um, I think it was Lince Dorado a super kick, and, and then dropped him with a side Russian leg sweep, which was awesome. It's it's a simple but effective tag team move. And then throughout the match, Graham Metalik obviously it was amazing on the ropes. It's nothing new. Uh, and then there's actually a spot where this is near the end of the match where Lince Dorado linked up with Graham Metalik. And then he jumped from the top rope onto the outside. Uh, the, this leaving Lince Dorado to do a beautiful, beautiful shooting star press, which is a little off-centered, but it was still well done, uh, which is broken up by Samil. Um, so then this kind of led to the finish where um, I think Samil or Samir, uh, I think that's her name. So they, he tries to grab the pinata that's on the apron. And then Kalisa tries to grab it for him. There's a little tug of war, then the pinata breaks. Um, this distracts Lince Dorado, and then um, this distracts Lince Dorado, and then there's a roll up using the tights. One, two, three. The Singh brothers get the win. Um, I guess I could say I'm not really surprised about this. Um, you know, the Singh brothers looks like they're getting a slow push as a tag team, but. As a tag team, what is going like? What's the plan? What's the plan for the tag teams of 205 Live? That's lots of them, and lots of them are pretty good working together. So I'm surprised they haven't announced a tag team uh, division yet for the 205 Live because it'd be nice to have a tag team match once in a while and something to defend because like they're just having tag team matches with no payoff. The second match was between the Brian Kendrick versus a local town named Russ Taylor. Um, this was a quick, I think it was not even five minutes. Uh, it was a squash match leading uh, Brian Kendrick with a slice bread number two. And it's a one, two, three. Uh, that's basically, they're still trying to build up Brian Kendrick, uh, which I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to. Brian Kendrick is a veteran. He's shown his ways. He's trained a lot of people in WWE. Um, so I enjoy having him wrestle once in a while. And he shows that he can still work in the ring. So the next segment is a promo, or rather an interview, with Jack Gallagher, which is interrupted by the newly re-signed Mike and Maria Canellis. Uh, they're basically saying that Jack Gallagher is dead weight. He doesn't need to be or deserve to be in 205 Live, which basically sets up a match, hopefully next week, uh, between Mike and Jack, which I'm excited for. And um, speaking of Mike Canellis, uh, Mike and Maria took over the Tool 5 live Twitter, which is actually pretty entertaining if you guys read it. There's a lot of Q&A stuff, and they're actually looking for a nominee to take over uh, as a GM of Tool 5 Live because they have disapproved of Drake Maverick being uh, the GM because he's solely focused on uh, winning the 24-7 championship, which is actually pretty entertaining as I record this because, uh, as you know, Drake Maverick got married and right before he won the 24-7 uh, championship and during his wedding wedding or he got married but in a, in a promo part of the wedding he got rolled up by our truth uh as they're walking down the aisle which is actually pretty funny um the 24-7 championship is has been gold ever since they 
uh, brought it up there, and I've always said that wait and see what they have planned for it. And our truth and Drake Maverick are perfect for the championship. Uh, they don't need the hardcore gimmick. As long as they're entertaining and that chase for the championship that could happen anywhere is represented, I feel like that is what makes the 24-7 championship really, really good right now. Third match, of the, third match of the night, and the main event was between Ari Davari and Oni Lorcan. Uh, this dates back a few weeks ago and was definitely emphasized um, during the Fatal 4 last week when Ari Davari came out and hit Oni with a steel chair, taking him out of that match. Um, so we started this match off with uh, Oni Lorcan, like a ball of fire with all his energy, um, with his brawler style, beating up Ari Davari. And I, I really like Oni's style. Um, and it's a great addition to 205 Live. And from there on, there was a spot that changed the moment momentum of the match. Uh, it was Ari Davari and Oni at the second rope and the corner. And Ari does this, uh, it's like an arm bar, side rushing leg sweep. Uh, from the second rope, they fell back. And from there on, Oni's left arm was hurt, which was the focus for Arya. And he focused on all the match, which was a great storyline for it. Um, but in addition to that, I want to focus on the camera angles and presentation again. I really like the fact that they have a cameraman that's walking around the action. And it's just not that fixated uh, cameraman that's shaking every time there's a hit. They're actually walking around to see the different angles of moves, of holds. Um, it just it does make things boring. It's, it's a really good presentation change. And it looks different from the main roster, which I like. I like how they're trying to differentiate themselves from um, the main roster. And uh, during that match, uh, change, to change subjects, during that match, uh, Oni and Arya have this back and forth and Oni's slaps sound painful. I mean, they don't sound as bad as Walter's slaps. If you guys ever heard it, oh my gosh, it's, it's like a firecracker. Um, but Oni's slaps are, was devastating as well. Um, but the finish was uh, Oni does the half and half, Arya rolls out of the ring, uh, and Oni couldn't pin him. So Arya grabs the steel chair, hits him with it, gets DQ'd, and um, throws Oni onto the announcer's table, beats him, beats him up on it, and then the uh, segment is capped off with Arya throwing, uh, throwing Oni onto the Titan Tron. So the final part of this video I will be predicting the triple threat for the Cruiserweight Championship match. I think uh, Drew Gulak will win by beating Akira Tozawa. Um, this protects Tony Nese and I think making a possible feud in the future uh, because of their history together, I think this is something that they could definitely build off of. Uh, Drew Gulak, this new packaged character, I think he can really build a really good heel champion for 205 Live. Uh, the last heel was, what, Buddy Murphy? And he did a fantastic job as a Cruiserweight champion Tony Nese was okay, but he didn't elevate, he didn't make the Cruiserweight Championship prestigious. He's just been there, uh, which has been a problem in WWE. They have these champions that don't add, add uh, prestige to the, to the field of the championship. There's no, there's no hype of it. I think right now, who's the best champion? Um, Samoa Joe. I mean, that's a different story. Uh, but before I wrap things up here, I just want to thank you so much for watching the video. And if you watched last week's video, I, I thank you so much again. And if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to discuss anything, leave it in the comments below. And we'll talk about it next week um, after another 205 Live review and discussion. And uh, if you guys liked it, don't forget to click the, the thumbs up button, the like button, and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, there'll be more wrestling videos coming out soon. I'm going to see if I can do a uh, Stomping Grounds quick prediction, uh, maybe coming out tomorrow. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy and peace. Keep it too sweet, guys.